September 29th. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done for you. John 13, 15. Every soul recast into this model, every mind conformed to this pattern, and every life reflecting this image is an exalting and a glorifying of the Son of God. There is no single practical truth in the Word of God on which the Spirit is more emphatic than the example which Christ has set for the imitation of his followers. The church needed a perfect pattern, a flawless model. It wanted an impersonation, a living embodiment of those precepts of the gospel to strictly enjoyed upon every believer. And God has graciously set before us our true model. Whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. And what says Christ himself? My sheep follow me. We allow that there are points in which we cannot and are not required literally and strictly to follow Christ. We cannot lay claim to his infallibility. He who sets himself up as infallible in his judgment, spotlessly pure in his heart, and perfect in his attainments and holiness, deceives his own soul. Jesus did many things too, as our surety which we cannot do. We cannot drink of the cup of divine trembling which he drank, nor can we be baptized with the baptism of blood with which he was baptized. He did many things as a Jew, was circumcised, kept the Passover, Christian, which are not obligatory upon us, and yet in all this is essential to our sanctification, to our holy, obedient, God-glorifying walk. He has left us an example that we should follow his steps. In his lowly spirit, meek, humble deportment, and patient endurance of suffering. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. In the disinterestedness of his love, his pure benevolence, the unselfishness of his religion, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be to you which was also in Christ Jesus. For even Christ pleased not himself. Look not every man on his own circle, his own family, his own gifts, his own interests, comfort and happiness. Upon his own church, his own community, his own minister. Let him not look upon these exclusively. Let him not prefer his own advantage to the public good. Let him not be self-willed in matters involving the peace and comfort of others. Let him not form favorite theories or individual opinions to the hazard of a church's prosperity or a family's happiness. Let him yield, sacrifice, and give place, rather than carry a point to the detriment of others. Let him with a generous, magnanimous, disinterested spirit in all things imitate Jesus, who pleased not himself. Let him seek the good of others, honoring their gifts, respecting their opinions, nobly yielding when they correct and overrule his own. Let him promote the peace of the church, consult the honor of Christ, and seek the glory of God. Above and beyond all private and selfish ends, this is to be conformed to the image of God's dear Son, to which high calling we are predestined, and in any feature of resemblance which the Holy Spirit brings out in the holy life of a follower of the Lamb, Christ is thereby glorified before men and angels.